Welcome back. We're now into uh, part four of the uh, Book of Mormon Middles Map Geography. Uh, in this particular part, we're going to draw attention to uh, Alma's journey. Alma's journey is very important, you'll see, because it informs the Mesoamerican model. And uh, it's considered, his journey is considered to be a large constraint on the geography of the Book of Mormon. So we're going to look at that. So here we are then in part four, challenges. And that is Alma's journey from Nephi to Zarahemla. So the question is, is the 1400 mile separation between the city of Zarahemla and the city Nephi, is that plausible? Uh, in the Book of Mormon story. Well, <clears throat> we already know, of course, and we've discussed about Tumbaga and its movement from Colombia up into Central America. And we know how that uh, seems to fit nicely with uh, King Mosiah who abandoned the land of Nephi and went to the north. It says that they traveled some distance, but it wasn't given as to how far they went in the wilderness until they arrived and discovered Zarahemla a land which had been established by the Mulekites. About 180 BC, during King Benjamin's reign, Zenith leads his people back to the city of Nephi, and also in that year the Lamanites attempt an invasion of Zarahemla but are soundly defeated. Okay, now about 121 BC, Mosiah II uh, is um, petitioned by his people to find out what happened to Zenith and his people, okay? And so they send a team under Ammon, uh, not the missionary Ammon, but another fellow who described himself as not being very religious. Um, and they wandered many days in the wilderness, even 40 days did they wander before they came to the land of Nephi. Now the 40 days could be a description of the amount of time to travel the distance, but it could also be a holdover from that Jewish phrase of a long time, you know, 40 days and 40 nights, a long time. <clears throat> now on the returns to Zarahemla, <clears throat> we see about 120 BC, Limhi's people are under now Ammon's guidance and they return to Zarahemla. It's important to note that they're not under the direction of the prophet. Uh, they do this through their own planning and efforts. Uh, and are successful in getting away from the Lamanites and getting themselves up to the north. Also about that time, Alma Senior uh, and the church also returned to the land of Zarahemla. Now, all of these descriptions of travel between Zarahemla and Nephi are uh, described as going through the wilderness and very difficult and taking many days. So if you were to have flocks, uh, and you're traveling at about 10 miles per day, the time to travel 1,400 miles would be about 140 days, around four to five months, a significant journey, significantly hard, as has been described. But Alma's journey with the church, depending on how you interpret it, takes between 12 days and 21 days. So that doesn't fit the four to five month model. So here's the first challenge to the metals map geography. Now let me go back to um, Dr. Lund and his interpretation. Again, he is an advocate of the Central American, uh, Mesoamerican model. And again, he suggests that Joseph Smith is right. Lehi lands south of the Isthmus of Darien, but then travels north and they establish first inheritance up closer to what we today call Guatemala and Honduras area. And that is informed and constrained by Alma's 12 to 20 day trip. Uh, so that informs that Central American model because a journey from Colombia to Guatemala uh, would have to take more than 12 to 21 days. So a question that comes up is, is, this, is Alma's journey perhaps evidence of a miraculous journey? And is there evidence for that in the Book of Mormon? Miraculous journeys do exist in the scripture. We can name a number of them, including Moses with the Red Sea crossing and the feeding of the house of Israel uh, in the wilderness by the Lord. 
Uh, we have the Jaredites with their lighted barges, which were pushed across the ocean to the Americas. We have Lehi with the Liahona that guided them. We also have in the Bible with the wise men from the east who have a star as their guide. We note in the Book of Mormon that the people of Zarahemla are, quote, struck with wonder and amazement and knew not what to think after, Mos uh, after Mosiah caused to be read the account of Alma. Now, Mosiah's, uh, uh, Mormon's abridged account, of course, simply states that, quote, after Alma had been in the wilderness 12 days, they arrived in the land of Zarahemla. He just states it as a fact. So, what was it that caused the people to be struck with amazement and wonder? We know that the faithful church was entitled to greater blessings than Limhi's people. And this is evident in how the Lord miraculously lightened their burdens when they were placed under in bondage to the Lamanites and put the Lamanites to sleep so that the people could escape. As opposed to Limai and his people who made the Lamanites drunk <laughs> and escaped in the night. Uh, there are some quotes here from the story that, quote, the voice of the Lord came to them as a group on two reported occasions to lighten their burdens and to tell them of their escape. Also, we have the Lord telling Alma, quote, Thou shalt go before this people, and I will go with thee and deliver this people out of bondage. So we know that the Lord was directly involved in this escape from the Lamanites. Alma the Younger recalls, quote, that we were delivered by the mercy and power of God. The Lord did deliver them out of bondage by the power of his word, and we were brought into this land. Zarahemla. So the question comes, is there evidence for Alma's miraculous journey? And is there evidence for a normal four to five month journey? Now I would propose that there is. And so one of the things that comes out of this Book of Mormon's medals map uh, interpretation is we have perhaps identified a miraculous journey by Alma and the church on their return to Zarahemla. But also, there's evidence in the Book of Mormon that this journey took a long time. So let's construct that. On this time chart, what we're looking at first of all is we'll start at the end of it. This is where Mosiah, King Mosiah II, reports Ammon's success in finding Zenith's people. And he delivers Zenith's record to the people but we're also told that at the same time he delivers Alma's record to the people. Now we can assume, I think, correctly that King Mosiah, under constraint of his people, would report as quickly as possible the fact that Zenith's people had been found and had returned. What's interesting, though, is that he's giving not only Zenith's record to the people, but also Alma's. So Alma must have arrived at or slightly after uh, Zenith and his people to be included in that king's report, which again we suggest he wouldn't delay. All right, so let's look at this in a time scale. First of all, uh, we have um, Alma's journey in the, at, the, at the top. We have a 12-day journey from the land of Helam to Zarahemla, or perhaps it's 13 days uh, or it might be 21 days in the direction towards Zarahemla. Now, how are those arrived at? Well, we know that Alma and his people fled Nephi and they, and they went to the land of Helam. We are assuming here that that may have been towards the north. So that could be uh, a distance of eight days, is what was described there, to go to Helam. And then, when they escaped from Elam, they went one day and then rested. That may also have been towards the north. Uh, and then we know that the 12 days certainly would have been to the north because Zarahemla is uh, north of the land of Nephi. So it's either a 12-day journey or 
perhaps 13 days or 21 days between the city of Nephi and Zarahemla on the account of Alba's journey. Now, which part of that would, do we contend might have been miraculous? Well, it would be the 12 days or the 13 days. That would have been the miraculous journey. The other eight-day journey from Nephi to Helam, uh, there are no indications that that was a miraculous journey. Now let's look at Limhi's journey, and we see that in the long red arrow, where he flees Nephi many days in the wilderness. So let's now look at what happens in the history as it is laid out for us in the book of Mosiah, in the 22nd through the 25th chapters. What we have is, first of all, on our timeline, now looking at the bottom of the timeline, Alma flees Nephi eight days to Helam. We're assuming that's towards the north. The end of his journey is either, is basically 13 days then to Zarahemla. Well, can we have a time scale or a time scale there no. in between those two? Let's look at that. Let's look at it by looking at Limhi's journey. He, uh, the, the Lamanite army, pursues Limhi for two days and many days lost. So, how long was that? Well, we don't know. Many days lost. Then what happens? The army discovers Amulon, the, the priests of Noah, okay? And they subjugate them by the army and take control of Amulon and his people. Well, that takes time. Subsequent to that, uh, they now come across the land Helam. Now look what they do there. They subjugate it by the army. Amulon goes to Nephi and back, which is a 16-day journey. Uh, the army families have to be gathered and brought back to the land Helam. And then Amulon exercises authority over Helam for a period of time, both the time of heavy and then lightened burdens. All of that takes quite a while. At a minimum, probably three months. So here we have evidence that there is a significant amount of time that has to pass uh, for Limhi to escape and then get to Zarahemla and King Mosiah but for Alma to reach there at about the same time would certainly require a miraculous journey. So you've got evidence of both things. You've got evidence of a normal, long journey, and you've got evidence that there's perhaps a miraculous journey by Alma. Since the Book of Mormon is true, you know, we have to consider uh, both of those as, poss as possibilities. Uh, there's another interesting account. I mentioned the wise, men, the wise men and their travel to Jerusalem. Uh, there's an interesting book that came out recently. It was originally found in the Vatican Library. It has been translated out of the Aramaic into first Italian and then a few years ago into English. It's called The Revelation of the Magi. It's interesting. It describes the travel of the wise men or the Magi as they refer to themselves to Jerusalem. What's fascinating is that there's 12 of them, and they're named. This record goes back, has been tra traced back into the second century after Christ, and it is believed to be the record that informed the account of Matthew. But listen to some of the things that are told about their journey to Jerusalem. These are miraculous. Uh, and the star, our guide, our good messenger, our perfect light, our glorious leader, again appeared for us, going before us, and upholding, or carrying, that's the translation's words, not mine, our whole caravan from all sides, and enlightened us by its hidden light. And we had no need of the light of the sun or of the moon, and by night and by day we walked in its light without distress or weariness. By the way, it was not just these 12 men, they had their entire entourage with them. And it, and it prepared before us a blessed dwelling place in which to reside. Even our provisions were abundant and did not decrease. And it gave rest to us from all of our fatigue, as if we were not journeying on the road. And it made mountains and hills and rugged places level before us. Even the rivers before us we crossed by foot without fear. When we crossed into places of beasts and vicious snakes, 
we trampled them with our feet. And this last quote, all of the stages in which we journeyed were short and swift in our eyes. So here's a description of a miraculous journey. And so I have to ask the question, was there a miraculous journey for Alma and the church? Another thing that's important to understand is that supports the idea that there was a distance of 1,400 miles, that, that that is plausible, from between the city of Nephi and the land of Zarahemla, there's a number of things to consider. In 210 BC, King Mosiah and the righteous Nephites abandoned the land Nephi. They traveled some distance, as we have talked about, until they arrived in Zarahemla, which had been established by the Mulekites. There's that Lamanite invasion attempted in 180 BC, but until about 120 BC, there were only idle Lamanites inhabiting the wilderness area between Nephi and Zarahemla, but political control from the city of Nephi improved significantly after 120 BC. Why is this? Well, that's when Amulon, one of Noah's priests, started to teach the Lamanites writing and the Nephite language. So the physical separation and time had resulted in significant changes in language among the Lamanites. The Lamanites became more united, though, under these organizing efforts, and they developed their political connections. By about uh, 87 BC, during the time of Alma the Younger, the Lamanite king was in communication with his subordinate kings. There's talk about roads that chariots could travel on, and there was a course to the land Nephi from Zarahemla, also referred to. So what's interesting then is that then by about 72 BC, we have a situation that has developed where Nephi, the land Nephi, and the king's control over all those people has now created a situation further north where Captain Moroni has to establish a border between the land Nephi and the land Zarahemla. And he, what he does is they literally move the Lamanites that are in the wilderness areas surrounding Zarahemla and they take them and, and move them south of the border. And he builds the city Moroni and Nef, Nef, Nephi ha, uh, that were built on the east uh, of that southern border with Nephi. And then we began to have, after that, we have major battles occurring, which shows, and again, it speaks to the reality that it probably did. 1,400 miles makes sense because it took about 200 years before the Lamanites could become a threat to the Nephites and the Mulekites further north. So that would be reasonable. By 50 BC, many of these battles and everything are over, and the high, the, then there is extensive trade develops between the Nephites, the people in Zarahemla, and the people in Bountiful. And they talk about roads, and they talk about commerce that was developed between them. 